coming to you from the world-famous Apollo Theater. I'm Sybil Wilkes. Welcome to tonight's show, No Diabetes by Heart at the Theater. Welcome to the stage, your host and star of tonight's show, the award-winning actress, Angela Bassett. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so honored to serve as your host tonight for the very first No Diabetes by Heart at the Theater Show. And I can't think of a more amazing place to be than here at our home, the Apollo Theater. As an ambassador for No Diabetes by Heart and someone who holds a very special place in my heart for Harlem, black history and the arts, it means so much to me to be here with all of you. We may not be physically together, but I can feel your presence and your excitement for what we're about to experience together. Since the 1930s, the Apollo Theater has been the premier show place for live theatrical entertainment in Harlem. So many of us grew up watching the legendary performances that happened right here on this very stage. Ella Fitzgerald, Aretha Franklin, the Jackson Five, Louis Armstrong, to name a few. Just like the days when we tuned in each week to watch Showtime at the Apollo, tonight, let No Diabetes by Heart transport you here to the soul of Harlem. We have a half hour of music and entertainment lined up for you with acts ranging from jazz to break dancing to special musical performances like the one we just saw. I'm looking forward to sharing my own personal story with you, a special tribute to my mother who I lost too soon from heart disease caused by her diabetes. And later, I'll introduce you to two new friends I've met, Sarah Bryant and Anthony Wilson, both once sat in the audience at the Apollo, never dreaming their stories would be told on this stage. They didn't know they could make a difference simply by being who they are, but they are. I imagine many of us feel that way. But by being here tonight, you've already taken one step towards making a difference. This year, we witnessed the strength and resilience of the black community and the impact we have when we come together. Let's take a moment to recognize that our reach is greater and our power is stronger than any of us can truly comprehend. With that in mind, I invite you to get comfortable and enjoy the show. What was the name of the show? featuring the iconic Sidney Poitier that was the first dramatic play to be shown on this stage. The name of the show was The Detective Story. 
It's time for our first monologue of the evening, the story of Sarah Bryant, a wife turned caretaker, now living with diabetes. That was the nurse. She said I have type 2 diabetes. I think she said she would send me some more information, but I don't really know what she said after that. It doesn't matter. I already know what diabetes is. And I know what happens if you ignore it. Because diabetes took my husband from me. Through sickness and health, I remember making those vows to Joseph and thinking, no, knowing that even though we got married when I was 43 and he was 56, we still had so many good years ahead of us. I knew he had diabetes, but I didn't think it was a big deal. He was a strong man. He was the one I'd waited for, my protector. I never even saw him check his blood sugar, not once. It was like his diabetes didn't exist. And then he had the stroke. It was the day after Christmas. It took everything from us. Those happy, carefree years we thought we had, gone, just like that. Replaced with sickness, which defined the rest of our time together. Have you ever seen someone lose their will to live? It was hard to blame him. And boy, was it hard to take care of the both of us. I woke up at 4 a.m. to take care of our three dogs and get Joseph situated in his recliner before I left for my hour and a half commute to work. Always the recliner. It's where he always wanted to be. When I got home, already exhausted, I'd see four pairs of eyes looking out the window, waiting for me. Joseph would still be in his recliner. If he fell, I'd somehow get him up because our closest neighbors were five miles away. He never slept through the night, so I never slept through the night. I was so, so tired. I remember one day going to the doctor with him. After we talked about Joseph, the doctor looked at me and said, now, how are you doing? I just burst into tears right there. It was the first time in a year and a half that anyone asked me that. Everyone was totally focused on Joseph, including me. But while I was helping him, who was helping me? And without me, who would take care of him? We were going through the motions of life, and back then, I didn't stop to think about it. And now that I have, I can see my health was going downhill too. I haven't always been the best patient. But since Joseph's been gone, I have made a point to stay up with my own doctor's appointments. And now the nurse says I have diabetes too. Diabetes, the thing that led to my husband's stroke, weakened his heart and took his life. It took our life together. Well, I can tell you this for certain. Stroke? Heart disease? That's not going to be my story. I will not saddle my family with having to take care of me. And I will not lose my happy years. Not again. Well, I can tell you this for certain. Stroke? Heart disease? That's not going to be my story. I will not saddle my family with having to take care of me. 
And I will not give up on my happy years. Not again. I will learn. I will not ignore diabetes. Ignoring it doesn't make it go away. I will claim it. I will work hard. And I will live. Here with us tonight, please welcome Sarah Bryant. Sarah, thank you for sharing your story of resilience. My condolences for your loss. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I will always cherish the life that I had with my husband prior to his stroke, but I will always miss him. Absolutely. I can understand that. Those of us who have lost loved ones can certainly relate to the sentiment. While we sit with your powerful story for a minute, I want to talk about this place and your connection to it. I heard that you have a very early memory of the Apollo Theater that could make most of us, a lot of us, very envious. Yes, when I was about four or five, I went to the Apollo to see James Brown. He was the headliner act, and the Jackson Five was a part of Amateur Night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Both entertainers I, I have seen and would love to have seen at the Apollo. Your smile is a great thing to see. You've been through a lot. Tell me, how did you do it? Well, when my husband first had his stroke, I came across this saying, and it said, you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. And I actually had that hung up on the wall in my office to remind me every day of the strength that I needed to show for the both of us. Absolutely. Well, I can tell being a strong woman is part of your legacy. Tell me, how has your experience motivated you to share your story with others? I think it's important, um, especially in the African-American community, to um, let people know that number one, having diabetes is not anything to be ashamed of. And it's a disease that you can control instead of letting it control you, as long as you get on top of it and let the people around you help you to navigate through it. And you can have a successful life even with the disease. So right, so rightly said, education is the key. And as you said, you can control it. It doesn't have to control you. Well, it's so wonderful to see you claiming your life, just like your monologue said. Up next, we have another inspiring story that just might make you laugh as well. But before we do, let's take a pause and pay tribute to another musical legend. Good, babe. 
Still to come on tonight's show is Angela Bassett's personal tribute to her mom. But right now, we have one more important story to share with you, Anthony's story, an EMT who found himself needing to be saved. Whoa, this is weird. You're there and I'm here, but I'm you and you're me. Don't worry, Anthony, I'll keep us away from any bright lights because we're gonna wake up. But I can see by all those drips and hospital monitors that we're not leaving here for a while, so we might as well use this out-of-body experience for a good old heart-to-heart, -heart, just between us. And since this team of nurses is watching our every breath and move on that bed, I'll start. We almost died. Thank God for Sheila. Brother, we knew what we were doing when we asked that beautiful angel to be our wife. She talked our stubborn self into going to the hospital. Not that we'll remember we were out of it. She called our boys at the hospital and told them we were on our way in. Good thing she didn't go to work that morning. The doctor said she would have found us dead in your bed if it went in another way. They shocked our heart twice. Between that and our heart condition, sounds like we're earning a pacemaker. No more jackhammers and chainsaws for us. We'll probably get that extra pat down by TSA when we fly too. The things we do for a reliable heart rhythm. And that's not all. When we wake up, the doctor's gonna tell us we have type two diabetes. We'll be stunned. I go to the doctor every year, we'll say. We truly didn't see it coming. But Anthony, my man, when we look back at it, the signs were there. It's true what they say. The Nile ain't just a river in Egypt, get it? The Nile River, denial? <laughs> Hold on a second, I need to do something. For anyone who needs to hear this, the moment you come up with the idea that peeing in a bottle so people don't notice how often you have to go is the right thing to do, don't do it. That's when you gotta see a doctor. You don't have to live like that. Actually, if you ignore it, you might not get to live like that. Now, where was I? Ah, right, denial. Denial. Our favorite friend Annette talks about diabetics in denial, but that won't be you. We're gonna own this. The whole family's gonna own this with us. Kayla, not exactly our baby girl anymore, She'll connect our CGM to her phone so she can check up on our blood glucose. And her brother, Ty, he'll be texting us so much we'll wonder if he can still hold down his full-time job. Done good with these two. Okay, okay, Sheila might have helped a little too. Speaking of our crew, that sounds like the mighty Team Wilson coming down the hall. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. Got a lot to live for and a testimony to share. But remember our deal, this little heart to heart stays between us. Here with us tonight, please welcome Anthony Wilson. Hi, Anthony. I understand you're no stranger to this theater. How does it feel to have your story told on this big stage? Ooh, let me tell you. Growing up watching Apollo when I was a young kid, every Friday night was just amazing. It was fun to see, you know, all the entertainers. And hey, I never thought I'd be back this way. But you know, when I became an ambassador for No Diabetes by Heart, my goal was always to reach just one person and make a difference in one person's life. You know, after what we've been through in 2020, time is precious and life is short. So whatever we can do to preserve the memories together, that's what it's all about. Oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful to hear. Anthony, tell me this. Is working with your doctors something that you've always done? Or is this something new for you? Well, to be honest with you, no, I haven't. Uh, but after being diagnosed with diabetes, you know, it's been my mission to educate myself and then talk to my doctor, ask questions to find out what's going on and what we can do together as a team to ensure that, you know, I'm taking care of myself. <laughs> Let me tell you this story about a good friend of mine. So I went to visit a friend in the hospital a couple years ago. The nurse came in and said, hey, your blood sugar is a little high and I need to give you some insulin. I was like, insulin? 
Really? I couldn't believe it. I had been diagnosed years prior to this. And this is my best friend. And he never told me he was living with diabetes. You know, and quite often in the African-American community, we don't talk about family history or our own history. We kind of isolate it and we keep to ourselves. You know, so the key is teamwork. We need to talk about it. We need to be about it. We need to educate each other. It takes teamwork. It takes a family. And we can do this together if we just educate and we talk about it. That's the key. Talk about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You said that correctly. Anthony, you are an inspiration. And I believe that you've made a difference in someone's life by sharing your story. And I know that sounds like that's really, really important to you. And, uh, and I wish you and Ms. Sheila all the best. And thank you for taking care of each other and of yourselves for each other. Now, I know we've already seen some amazing performances tonight, but what we have next will take you right back to the streets of Harlem, back to where it all began. Ah, yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of your seat and move with us because this one's sure to make you feel like dancing. Angela Bassett's most iconic roles was a real-life woman who performed at the Apollo Theater several times. Who was Angela portraying? Ah, yeah, you know it, Tina Turner. For our final performance of the evening, please welcome to the stage Angela Bassett. The loss of her mom gave her an unexpected purpose. Mama, we have so much to talk about. But I guess for now, I'll do most of the talking. I'm back in Harlem where it all started. Yeah. Where you brought me into this world, barely more than a child yourself. This isn't my first time working with the Apollo, but I still have to pinch myself to make sure it's real. So many of my dreams have come true. It took work, like you said it would. It can be a cold, cruel world out there and you have to be prepared to meet your opportunity when it comes. <laughs> you taught me that. I didn't always appreciate that lesson growing up. Your standards were always so high for us. We had to do things the right way, the proper way. And sometimes it felt critical. I wondered how I could ever live up to your expectations for me when you struggled to live up to the ones you had for yourself. But now, now that I'm a mother, oh, I get it, yeah. Oh yeah, I get it. 
You always just wanted the best for your kids. You wanted me to have the opportunities you didn't have. Yes, a good education, a rewarding career, supportive husband. And mom, I am so, so blessed. But letting you go, though, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. You made your heavenly transition <laughs> due to heart failure from type 2 diabetes. It's a story we hear far too often in our community, and it, it doesn't have to be that way. Uncle Ralph has been diagnosed with type 2 now. And this time, we know better, so we're going to do better. We make sure he talks to his doctor about his heart, and we make sure we've got healthy food, food all of us can enjoy and happily eat when we get together. Losing you too soon was a wake-up call for all of us. Good health is our biggest blessing. We feel that deep in our bones now. You know, you were always so strong-willed and independent. <laughs> That's something you and I have in common. But one thing I'm sure we can agree on, there are times when those traits serve us better than others. Mom, I've learned that sometimes we need to ask for help. Sometimes we need to let someone else be strong for us. When you passed, all kinds of people sent me cards about what you meant to them. I had no idea. You didn't need a lot of money or a college education or world-famous stage to make a difference. I didn't get a real clear sense of who you were until you left this earth. But now that I know, I'm sharing our story to honor and continue your legacy of helping others. Yeah. You showed me that you don't need a world-famous stage to make a difference, but right now, I have one, and I'm going to use it. <laughs> We've seen it many times on all the shows, but what is the name of the famous stump that sits on the pedestal at stage right there where every entertainer can give the traditional rub for good luck before taking the stage? <laughs> and this is a true, true, true name. Oh, does this name ever ring appropriate? The Tree of Hope. Okay, you all. I don't know about you, but this time together went by way too fast. I feel inspired. I feel energized. And I definitely want to hear some more of that music. Tonight made me feel like I was home again. And I'm so thankful that we had the opportunity to experience this night together. We are so very grateful to the Apollo Theater for opening their doors to us and for the support of our founding sponsors and our national sponsors who make No Diabetes by Heart possible. You and I know that the black community carries a high burden from type 2 diabetes and that diabetes brings with it a higher risk for heart disease and stroke. We also know that it will take each one of us to change that, all of us working together with our families, communities, and our allies. Right now, let's all commit to one action to give type two a take two, either for ourselves or for the ones we love. Let's commit to one small step today and build on it with another small step tomorrow. For you, maybe that means making healthier food choices. Maybe it means getting up to move your body more often. Or maybe it means calling your doctor and making that appointment you've been putting off because of the pandemic. Maybe it means helping a family member, a friend, or someone in your community who you know needs to make a change. Next time you go to the doctor, ask about how to protect your heart and brain. Because like Sarah said, heart disease, stroke, they don't have to be our story. I think about my mother every day. Think about Anthony. Think about Sarah. Think about the people you know and think about yourself. This is our moment and our opportunity starts now. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good night, everyone.
Thank you for joining No Diabetes by Heart from the world famous Apollo Theater. A big special thank you to amazing guests, Sage and the Jazz Band, Sarah Bryant, Anthony Wilson, and of course, the one and only, the incomparable Angela Bassett. Your personal testimony touched all of our hearts. I'm Sybil Wilkes. Good night, everyone.